And I think the evidence is really clear. This was a man-made disaster. It wasn't a natural disaster. Even though the storm came in and went out, we have many of those. It's when the levees broke that the city was compromised. So now, post-Katrina, we have a $14.5 billion levee system that is uh, built to Category 3 Rock strength. solid? Uh, it's as solid as a Category 3 if can Katrina be. If Katrina hit today, what would happen? It would be, we'd be safe. Would be fine under Katrina situations. Katrina was a five when it came in, then went a three, and then it was actually down to a one. But it's because the levees broke. The levees are much stronger than they were before. Now it's a risk reduction strategy. It's not a guarantee. Bigger storms are coming our way. And by the way, New Orleans is really the nation's canary in the coal mine. We're really an example to Miami, to New York, which suffered this through Sandy, that when these big events come in our way, be they natural disasters, man made disasters, terrorist attacks, you have to build a more resilient city. So when you build back, you have to build back stronger. The magnificent thing that the people of the city have done is they didn't build the city back the way it was. They built it the way it should have always been if we would have gotten it right the first time. And so as you see us rebuilding our schools, rebuilding our health care delivery systems, rebuilding our economic development, rebuilding our government, the city has successfully turned itself around and it's moving in the right direction now and we're doing pretty well. Although. The challenge now is how to move it forward, how to become part of the 21st century knowledge-based economy and not leave anybody behind. And that's what we're working on now. Tell us briefly the story of Circle Food and why it's such oh, a great man. story. Circle Food was, was a historic African-American business that provided groceries to folks uh, in the 7th Ward, which was one of our oldest historic African-American neighborhoods. It got beat up, beat to hell by the storm, just like everything else came in. Dwayne Boudreaux, who was the owner of that, said, I'm not cashing out. I'm staying. I'm not going to borrow a bucket load of money. I'm going to wait. We put together a team of people to work with him, and through federal, state, and local work, through his work, through works of other financial institutions, we were able to help him stand back up. And he's really become an anchor of that community again. And it's a really wonderful story about what he's doing there and how well his business is doing. And he's also helping us in the Ninth Ward as well. So I want to talk a little politics, uh, big in your state. Sure. Um, a lot of legacy talk in American politics today. You got a Clinton and a Bush running. You're from a pretty famous political family. Sure. How many elections did your dad ever lose? Uh, I don't know that he lost any. Yeah, how many have you yeah, lost? Actually, I've lost two. You've lost two. And your sister just lost she one. She just lost one. So what's your sense of, in our current political culture, every state's different, but nationally, is having a famous political name a good thing? Is it an advantage or is it a bad thing? Well, it's, it's both. It cuts both ways because you take the good and the bad. I mean, generally speaking, name recognition, you know, goes a long way. And the more people you know, the better. Um, at the same time, you buy the liabilities of other people that you've worked with. I mean, in families, you love and adore the people who are part of your family. You work with them, you work with them, but you're separate entities as well. Um, it is really a net positive, though, because at the end of the day, it's really the experience that matters. The public gets kind of tired sometimes, and they want something new from time to time. Right. And at the end of the day, it's not going to save you. The only thing it does is get your foot in the door. You've got to perform, and you have to perform well, and you have to earn your stripes every day. Yeah. We've got to get our viewers who have never been to your city as jazzed up as I am to always oh, man, go back. Look at that picture. I mean, it's just it spectacular. First thing, teach me how to pronounce the name of your city. Nolans. 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 It's mean? just real easy, lazy. Nolans. Just Nolans. How's that? Nolans. Yeah, not New Orleans, not New Orleans. Uh, just Nolans. Uh, just Nolans. Let it, let All it right, roll. teach me how to pronounce the name of your state. <laughs> Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay. It depends on what part of the state you're from. You can call it Louisiana, but Nolans, Louisiana. Yeah. Just let it rip. Let Nolans, it roll. Louisiana. Let it roll. Easy. How's that? That's cool. All right. I know you love all your all your children equally, but what's the last great meal? Where where did you have the last great restaurant meal in your city? Oh, in New Orleans, it doesn't matter. Any restaurant spectacular. <laughs> Why? You're never going to ask me. How, I'm never going to answer how, that question. How could crazy? it be? Yeah, you know, Charleston's <laughs> like this too. You're well, a listen, big city, but you're not. Figure gonna, this out about you, New Orleans. How can you have such good food? So many good restaurants in one city. How does it happen? It's uh, not only that, but how can a city lose people and have 600 more restaurants after Katrina right. than they had before? And it's not just because we have a joy of life and a joy of food. We know how to enjoy things, Are even you in our difficult the circumstances. Don't have a joy of life. No, I think they have a wonderful joy of life, but it's not what they have in New Orleans. You're not explaining it to me. It's a <laughs> tiny little city. There aren't that many people. Yeah, we know how to eat. Storm. But why? Like, where does it come well, from? You just well, got to love no life. Eat, and that drives in incredible restaurateurs. It's really Across beautiful. Board, you well, get a great pizza there. Let's great talk Chinese about let's, let's talk about this. Yeah. How the city of New Orleans can take the joy of life and yeah. turn it into economic development and growth. In, a, in our city, the cultural economy, Art, music, food, yeah. fun. It's a five billion dollar industry biggest that industry feeds eighty thousand, along with, along with eighty thousand people. Right? Biggest industry, yeah. and it, and it really is about the business of entertaining people, sports entertainment. We've done more Super Bowls than anywhere else except Miami, and we should get the next one if, if Roger Goodell's listening. And uh, and it really is important that when you think about the business side of culture, 
what New Orleans really means to the rest of the world. And that's one of the reasons why the world gasped with the possibility that they would actually lose what they called the soul of the nation. New Orleans is a very important part of this country. We're very thankful, by the way, to the people of America for helping us stand up. And the K-10 anniversary, the Katrina 10, is going to be to commemorate the lives lost, right, to thank people for everything that they've done for us, and then to pivot and to look forward to our 300th anniversary, which, of course, is just going to be in three years because, of course, we were here before the rest of the country. Right. And, and we want to really be um, a model for the rest of America in all of the things that we're doing in terms of education, health care, uh, economic development, and particularly resilience, how cities learn how to live through difficult times and how to stand themselves back up. Yeah. Love what you're doing with the emphasis on education and health care because pre-Katrina, you were not a leader. No, an urban not at center all. In either of those areas. Well, we want a leader in much of anything yeah. before the storm. But New Orleans now is an ascendant city. I think anybody that comes into our city, notwithstanding our barnacles and notwithstanding that we still have the same problems as everybody else, New Orleans is a city that was at worst and we're going to first. Bloomberg has recognized us that way. Forbes has recognized us that way. The Wall Street Journal. More people are moving into the city than are leaving. Our GDP is growing faster. Our sales tax is growing faster. Our jobs are growing faster. Our education system has been re recalibrated. It's a pretty amazing story of not only surviving, Right, not only resurrection, but actually turning yourself around and actually becoming the city that you always should have been if you would have gotten it right the first time.